White House Networks presents the Premier Equipment Rentals pre-game show. Hi, everybody. Bright House Network's high school football game of the week, week five. The big number five, and this could not be a bigger game in Kern County High School football this season for 2009. The Centennial Golden Hawks hosting the Big Blue of Bakersfield High School, the Drillers. Can you believe this? Come into this game, week five, at two and two. And this is an incredibly important game for both teams, but an immensely important game for the Bakersfield High School Drillers. Let's hear from head coach Paul Gola about this week's contest. We have a great team. You know, we're two and two, we're sitting at two and two, but uh, you know, we're getting better and better. Right now we're starting eight to nine uh, underclassmen on, on defense uh, at times, and, and, and they're getting better weekly. And our big deal is, is every week we gotta continue to get better and get ready for that playoff run. Definitely, you know, Action Jackson, Jackson, and, and uh, Brian Burrell, and, and uh, right now we're a little banged up at the other uh, running back spot, but but uh, uh, Walter Hunt's down, and, and the seat his ankle sprained, so uh, a guy named Miguel Weiss is going to have to step up and, and hopefully have a big game for us, and both our fullbacks, and, and hopefully our receiver, hopefully everybody. <laughs> but you, you never know; it's going to be a tough game, and they got they got a great defense. So. The, the good news is, is we've we've kind of been playing the spread for the last three weeks, so nothing's really new for the kids. And you know, plus we have one of the best quarterbacks I think in the valley, also with with Brian, and, and with him being back there, it sure helps us in the secondary, and then uh, with run for us. Cody's a running back, and but he's a running back and throw like a quarterback, so it's, it's very tough. You know, a lot of times, especially in high school, you get a kid that can run the ball. They're 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 uh, you know spread option that runs the ball, and that's a little bit easier. And then you get a guy that can throw the ball but can't run the ball, and that makes it easier. But then when you got a dual threat like Cody, it's it's tough because you got you got to be great at both aspects of run and pass. Number one, you know, for, for the last four weeks, it's turnovers. You know, we've averaged probably four four turnovers a game and given up two three touchdowns offensively on turnovers. And, we, we got to take pride in pride in, in, in uh, ball security and, and getting off the ball and, and establishing our run game. Well, the home the home coach is Coach Brian Nixon. Number 62. The home coach Brian Nixon has a lot of pressure on him tonight as well. Yes, they're three and one, but this is a big big game for this Golden Hawks team. Let's hear from Coach Brian Nixon. We look to get better each week, and uh, you know that's something we talk about all the time: is getting better on a daily basis. And uh, if we continue to do that, there's good things that are going to happen for us this season. So we have to take one week at a time and get after it and get better each week and eliminate the little mistakes we make week to week. BHS is just a good football team all the way around, so you know it's going to be four quarters of, of hard-nosed football, and uh, we have to play assignment-based offense, defense, and special teams, and uh, get after it. They have an offense that can attack. The quarterback runs the ball really well. It's thrown the ball well. Um, they have some running backs that are, do a nice job. Their fullback hits a hole, and our offensive line gets off the football very well. So uh, defensively, we have to be prepared for a lot of things. Offensively, they have a very nice scheme defensively, and uh, they do a lot of shifting around and moving, and uh, our guys have to know their assignments and get it done so we can maintain the football and get first downs. Well, the strengths that we have are, you know, our kids are seasoned. They've battled been battle tested they know how to play in tough games and uh, we have to rectify some of our mistakes that we made last week and uh, get better from that it's going to be a good football game BHS is a good football team and uh, we know it's going to be a battle so we have to be prepared in every phase of the game what a game game number five week number five the centennial golden hawks hosting the bhs drillers we will be back right after this with the kickoff high school football game will be brought to you exclusively by bright house networks bakersville Got a job to do? Premier Equipment Rentals is your answer. Residential or industrial, we've got exactly what you need to get the job done. Whether it's a drill, trencher, bobcat, backhoe, or excavator, you can always count on Premier Equipment Rentals. And with our new extended hours, we're available when you need us. Check us out at 3217 Patton Way and 5001 Stein Road, or give us a call to find out more. Don't forget to ask about our weekend specials. Make your next project a breeze with Premier Equipment Rentals. We know home is where the heart is. 
That's why Bright House Networks works to make your home more enjoyable every day. Watch whatever you want on your time and find that perfect present. Share those special conversations. In a Bright House, it's all about delivering what your heart desires in the comfort of home. Wow, what a football game as Centennial Golden Hawks come onto the football field. I'm Vance Palm, joined by Kevin Keyes up on top of the booth. And as always, down on the grass, a Bakersfield High School alum and a gentleman who knows a lot about these big football games. Week five, Brian, and here they are, the, the Golden Hawks hosting your drillers. Well, Vance, we are here in week five, and one thing we know is these teams definitely want to win for their momentum. They want to get momentum going back in their league. Both of them playing tough league, especially Centennial. We've seen the Frontier and the different teams in that league so far that are very dangerous. Haven't seen Stockdale yet, who is leading that league and the top of that league. Let's talk about tonight with the Drillers. One thing about the Drillers, they've been inconsistent. They're starting all juniors on defense, so they're going to be a little bit slow to make them, uh, making uh, the proper reads. So they've been getting beat a little bit, getting out of assignment. So if they can control that and not fumble the ball and take care of the ball, they feel they have a good chance to win. Our captain, Brian Adams, thank you, sir. Kevin Keyes, welcome back up to the uh, bird's eye view up here, Dr. Keyes. What a game tonight for the Centennial Golden Hawks, Coach I, Nixon. Well, I tell you what, you know, listening to Coach Gola in his pregame uh, interview, he talked about uh, the dual threat of Cody Kessler and his ability to run the football and throw it just as well. He also has a dual threat player, and that's uh, Alfonso Jackson. Alfonso is one of the top uh receiving running backs in in the central valley as well as one of the top rushers so keep an eye out for for that young man as well but i love the the slogan on his shirt prove it that's something that they're definitely going to have to uh, do and it, it probably is going to have to take place here tonight coach gola has prove it on his t-shirt and for the season coach nixon has had all in as their slogan for the season so prove it and all in so everybody's all in to prove it tonight this is a very, very good week five, and thank you, Kern County voters. You voted for this game. You voted for Kevin and Brian Ein and the entire crew to be here. We thank you for that. Legitimately, we call this exclusively the game of the week, and uh, a long kick, and it goes deep into the valley of the end zone, so it'll be first and 10 for Cody Kessler and his crew on the 20-yard line. Captain Brian Adams, a game like tonight, you know, this is where these two quarterbacks, Burrell and Cody Kessler, you know, they, they, they almost have to kind of keep their emotions in check early in the game, yes? Well, Vance, they exactly have to keep the composure. They want to control the game. They want to control it with their tempo and their demeanor. They don't want to let it get out of control, but if they get too excited to huddle, the players get around and get excited. They want to make sure they take what the defense is giving them and put their team in a good position to put points on the board and get to a victory. Here we go, first and 10. Kessler will bring his group onto the field directly from a huddle with head coach Nixon. And we get week number five underway. Kessler has receivers all over the place. No running back back there. Goes to his right side. Wants to go down the field. Has a man open. Decides to keep it. And one thing that you and I and Brian have talked about off camera before the games is the running ability of Cody Kessler. We all know he's a basketball player. If this young man can at least get 50, 60, 70, maybe 80 yards on the ground, that just does so much for the confidence of this offense. Well, what he does is he gets players to be honest on the edge, and then that's where uh, his talented running back, 
Young Miles will come into play. Also has Grimes. Oh, and, ooh what hit. a hit. <laughs> Dakota Velasquez came in from his linebacker position untouched. Our audio visual plus replay and ouch, that's a big, big hit in there. Woo. And that brings up a long third and 15, just like that. They're already under the gun, third and 15. Max Heflin, Vance, goes 6'5", 290 pounds. When you add in Vel Velasquez, 220 pounds. Well, Kevin, look at all this to the left side as Kessler has as many guys as he needs on the left, but he looks over to the right side. Here come the drillers. Good protection for Kessler. He steps up into the pocket and, oh, just over the outstretched hands of Cole Halliman. Hey, they have to punt. Well, that's the one thing that dr the drillers will do to them all night. He's, they're going to come in their 3-5 defense. They're going to put pressure on Kessler, and Centennial is going to have to pick up the blitz. As you see, Kessler here just overshooting his talented receiver, Cole Hallam, who's also one of the top receivers in the Valley. Well, it's, it's going to be one-on-one -on -one tonight. Cole Hallam against Alfonso Jackson. So Hallam against A.J., what a matchup that's going to be. And and you, you look at the, uh, the the receiving end for the uh, drillers there at the 50-yard line. So Jackson and Brandon Johnson hoping for a decent punt, and they're going to get a chance to return this. A decent bounce is going to put it right in the hands of Johnson. Here he goes. Johnson cuts right up the middle. And pretty good defense. <laughs> Literally no blocking done at all by BHS and their special teams. Eight Golden Hawks wrap up Johnson, but it's going to be first and 10 on the 44-yard line. Well, Johnson is another one of those talented young individuals. He got him listed 5'7", 135 pounds, but you see the quickness there and a good open field tackle that time by Centennial's punt, punt coverage team. First and 10 on the Centennial 43-yard line, 44-yard line. And here's another look. Here's the first look at who Coach Golo told me is what he thinks the best quarterback in the Valley. Captain Brian Adams, Coach Gola, spoke with me before the game and said, Vance, Brian Burrell could be amongst the best quarterbacks in the Valley. Your thoughts? Well, Vance, this is our ch first chance to really see him. We only know what we've seen on highlight film off the paper but we'll see tonight what level of caliber he is and, and he could possibly be that but one thing that we know for sure is he's going to do a good job of getting guys the ball where they can make plays for him. Burrell 6'3", 195, a junior, has a big future in front of him. Last year he did get some time behind Alex Mitchell but his first play tonight, Kevin, it's already been marched back five yards. Uh, one of the unsung players on this backfield is Peter Welsh, keep an eye on that young man who's at the fullback position. Burrell on a keeper, and Burrell grinds it up about 11 yards. Would have been a first down, except they had to start five yards behind the line of scrimmage. So that'll be second and five, second and six. And uh, one thing about Burrell is his height. And anytime you have a quarterback at 6'3", or 6'4", or 6'5", in the high school level, it, 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 it tends to be successful. Second and six. Very quick play calling from the drillers. Velasquez, one of the backs blocking for him. A.J. behind him, but Burrell decides to get it up within a yard or two. Wow, look at those options he has back there. Velasquez, Jackson. Well, he does have some talented position, skill position players, but you take a look at those guys up front. You got big number 72, Giovanni Nunez. He's 5'8", 270 pounds. Those guys can move some bodies on the defensive line. A third and three fumble. Oh, he dropped the ball. He lost it. Does Centennial think they have it? Either way, it's a damaging play for the, gold, for the drillers. Wow. Helicopter flies over knowing that this is the game of the week. Wow, that brings up fourth and, I would say fourth and five, at least fourth and five, so a inopportune time for an exchange problem. Well, now here comes the punt team, Vance. I was wondering there with this short down, short territory that if they wouldn't go for it, but Gold brings in his punt team, and uh, let's see if they can pin this back inside the 10.
Nasita's punt. Look out. Ooh, dangerous. Took a funky bounce and downed by Cardenas, and it'll be first and ten for the Golden Hawks. You are watching High School Football Game of the Week, brought to you exclusively by Bright House Networks Bakersfield. Our two sponsors, our sole two sponsors that have helped put this together this season, Audio Visual Plus, everything you would ever want in the needs of audio visual, including the podiums, and of course, our premier equipment rental sponsorship going on their second year, these great scissor lifts that give you these great views. Week five, I'm Vance Palm. I've got Kevin Keyes up here, Brian Adams on the grass. What a football game. Week five, two teams battling for validity in their 09 season. The Drillers visiting the Golden Hawks. Second series for Centennial. Here we are, first and 10. Kessler, quick one across the middle. Not a very well thrown ball, and they're going to say incomplete. Not the best pass by young Cody. That's the type of route that they got to run against this driller defense when they're on man coverage of these short, quick little routes where the Centennial receivers must get separation from these talented defensive backs of the drillers. Quick play calling right at the line of scrimmage again. Both teams really not relying on a huddle. Kessler does have a back back there, but they've done no running whatsoever. It's been all in the air so far, second series. They This time they hand the ball off. And this time it looked like it was Myron Moore. Myron Moore we saw in the Freedom Bowl here earlier this season. A dangerous back given the opportunities. Myron Moore has some talent. Talent inside and outside as well, Vance. But what impressed me right there at the time was David Price, the outside linebacker for the Driller, 6'1", 215-pound junior, really did a good job of shutting down that, that hole. Kevin, I'm as guilty as anybody as not mentioning as many great defensive players as we get on these high school football games of the week. We talk so much about the great offensive talent, and I, as a play caller, focus a lot on the offense, but thank you for bringing into focus this great, great representation every single game of defensive players. Kessler has a man open. A lot of contact there in the middle of the field. The referee lets him play. No flags, and that'll be another third and out, and it's going to be a punt situation for... The Golden Hawks, Captain Brian Adams, you know, it's not as if you can just go at these DBs from BHS and have your will. Well, Vance, one thing, they're in a good position. That's one of the things they weren't able to do in the last couple weeks. Right now, they're putting themselves in good position, good pressure. Right now, it's a defensive battle. See what offensive team makes a mistake that gives the other team opportunity to capitalize. Cole Hallam is in the end zone. He'll put it up, and he punts it. Another decent punt, and it takes a... BHS bounce backwards, and it's going to be first and 10 at the 36, Kevin. Well, right now, the drillers are winning this uh, battle of the field position, and you can't keep giving this much talent and a half a field to work with. You, you know, you, you think about the talent that, that uh, Burrell has in his backfield with Welsh and Jackson, and then he, too, is capable of breaking the big one. So this is, uh, this is tougher to, to defend just half a football field. Well, you said it, Kevin. Here they go, first and 10 on the opposition's 37-yard line. Burrell on a keeper. Gets maybe two or three yards, but, you know, it's almost like that's a hint of what's going to happen all night tonight. No matter what they play, no matter what they throw, no matter what they option off, you're going to always have to count on Brian Burrell able to pick up two or three yards no matter what. Well, what, what's going to happen, Vance, is you're going to see they haven't really been given it to the up back on that dive option. Right. So pretty soon they're going to stop right. respecting that, and the next thing you know, that fullback is going to break a big one. Second and seven, Burrell looks out to his left side. It's going to be a first down at least. It's caught out there by Maston, and Maston gets very close to the first down. I like this Mercy Maston kid. He'll play both sides of the night, uh, both sides of the ball tonight for the drillers. A talented defensive back and also a very good receiver with, with good breakaway speed. Wow, he might be up for a cap award at the end of the season just for the name alone, Mercy Maston. Mercy sakes. And he can hit you on defense. He's a little guy, but he can bring the leather. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Third and one. And it is at. I thought you were doing a little Marvin Gaye there for a second. Mercy. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Six and a half left here in this first quarter. Kevin Keyes joining myself, Vance Baum, our captain, Brian Adams, on the field. And it's a nice football game here tonight. 
They go up the gut, Burrell on a keeper, and he muscles his way in, and the six foot three, 190 pound junior pounds his way into a first down. So, um, you know, the drillers only have one back in the backfield, which is their fullback linebacker, Peter Welsh. But what they do by running him up the middle, Vance, is they, they use that as a lead blocker, and, and Burrell follows them, and it, so it's like a like the fullback tailback. I, I, I love that, that scheme that they run. Brian, if you're down there, you're thinking at any moment, at any time, it's a flare to the corner. Look out. <laughs> it's a flare to the corner. Touchdown. Oh, did he hang on to it? Oh, he dropped it. Boy, he That's set that up perfectly. The last six or seven plays, he just sucked everybody in. And, man, I thought they had a TD. Well, take a look at this on the audio-visual instant replay. This is just a great toss by Burrell. Oh, goodness. And that ball was thrown exactly where it needed to be. Pretty good coverage by the Golden Hawks defensive back, Tyler Thornton. Second and 10. And now all of a sudden, the Golden Hawks defense back on their heels, wondering what's next. Burrell on a keeper. Really didn't get any traction on that, and the Golden Hawks were able to read it and hold them to a one-yard gain. Should bring up about third and seven. But just the just just that little glimpse we saw of him going to the end zone in a pass that should have been caught for a TD. And if you're if you're the Golden Hawks, you just have to always be aware. Here, here we go again. Could be any time, any place. Short shotgun, Burrell, hands off to AJ. Alfonso Jackson. This time it was red, and as dangerous of a player in the entire valley as there is, Alfonso Jackson. Get ready, everybody. If you remember, three years ago, Brian, you remember three years ago, you and I were up north for the Valley Championship. Young Peter Mitchell came in, substituted as a quarterback, handed off the ball to A.J., his first touch ever, and he went the distance for a touchdown. Yes, I do, just like, just like just, just yesterday. Man, unbelievable. A lot of movement on the line, no flag, goodness gracious. Looked like a uh, high school prom dance down there on the uh, line of scrimmage. Guys are moving on both sides of the line. No flags. Field goal good. 3-0 BHS. A lot of activity there on the line of scrimmage. No call and a beautiful kick. Beautiful kick it was. And I'm going to throw my first bloodline football Ooh. out with that young man. Brother. Big brother is up at the University of Washington. He's their kicker punter up there and having a great Great year so far. Yeah, hey, I've got to ask you a question. A question. Last week, we covered a game, and you had mentioned that there possibly might be a player of this season, a senior, heading up to uh, Cornell next year in the Ivy League. Who was that? Teddy Agu from uh, Frontier. All right. Uh, the, the Lumberjack, Jack Campbell, is playing for Cornell right now. And I happened to mention that to his father in passing over the week. I saw his father. I said, hey. Did you know it was Cornell's inauguration? They, they, the school was inaugurated a couple days ago, 100-year anniversary or something like that. I said, hey, Kevin Keyes mentioned a player of this season that may be going to Cornell. Mr. Jack Campbell wanted to know who that player was in case that young man goes to play with his son next year, the Lumberjack, maybe a little care package you can send him. Keep that in mind, Kevin. He's sending a lot of grapes back to Cornell. Oh. <laughs> There's another kick that won't be returned. And, and you know, that's a great – uh, weapon there with big man because Sean Johnson happens to be one of the finest return guys in the uh, in the league not if he doesn't have the football in his hand what a boot Woo. three nothing we're underway here in the first quarter under five minutes left I'm Vance Palm I have Kevin Keys up here down the grass Brian Adams and uh, the Golden Hawks here hosting hosting the BHS blue crew we have not had a big Bakersfield high school game yet this season and this is our second centennial game. We hosted them. We had them here hosting the Liberty Patriots in the, in, in the annual Freedom Bowl game that Centennial happened to win. And now with four and a half left, the Golden Hawks have done nothing yet here in the first quarter. A little bit of open field movement and the pass complete out there to Thomas Grimes, a player you love. Well, Thomas Grimes comes from pretty good stock as his father, Russell Grimes, was a two-sport athlete in college but look at little Grimes here that's what you want to do is get this track guy he has track speed but the toughness of a football player get him out in coverage and uh, just a sophomore is uh, young Grimes 
Gonna be a talented player as you see Cody Kessler hand the ball off to Myron Moore. They're talented running back. Myron's a senior this year. It's, boy, time flies. Time absolutely flies when you're up here on the top of the announcer's booth watching these young men grow up. And Myron Moore already a senior. Cody Kessler a junior. Third and five. They have not done a thing yet uh -oh. offensively. High snap. Kessler keeps it. This one pops out to Hallam. And it looks as though Hallam may have picked up a first down. And, boy, did they need that. Well, I love this play call in here by Coach Brian Nixon. When you got man coverage out there and a big cushion at the quarterback, run those stop routes. Run, keep running those stop routes pretty soon. That's going to set up that stop and go, and you may see the big play by Cody Kessel. Now they're up in press coverage on both sides, Vance. Both corners are up in man press coverage. A lot of real estate back there behind the safety. Let's see what happens. Kessler looks like he's going to keep it. No dice, nothing happening. Nothing happening. Brian, this no huddle offense. They're getting to the line as quickly as possible. Is it paying any dividends? You can see Peter Peter Welsh and his defensive linemen. These guys uh, are really doing a good job of controlling the line of scrimmage. When you got defensive linemen, three down guys that can really demand a double team block like the, the drillers defensive line is doing, that frees up their linebackers as you just saw on that play. Peter Welsh come in and make the big stop on Cody Kessler. Second and 12, three minute mark here left in the first quarter and Centennial has been struggling. They haven't had it to the uh, middle of the field yet. Hard count, great job there by Coach Nixon and his offense, and Kessler beautifully mixes up his cadence. Hard count, and uh, hey, every little bit helps, Dr. Keys. Second and 12. Moves it up to a second and seven. Here we go, under three minutes left in the first. I like this trip set there in a bunch. There's a lot of options out there, but he's under the gun. And Kessler gets rid of it, throws it behind Thomas Grimes, and he was under pressure, but had some options out there. Man, they, re they released everybody out there. Well, you see they, they, they're sending everybody after Kessler, but Kessler did a good job of avoiding the, uh, the rush there and extending that play, and that's simply weight room right there because uh, he, last year, uh, he may have gone down on that play, but you can see the offseason that, that Cody Kessler has is, is paying dividends. Kind of reminds me a little bit of that guy in Florida. Well, we'll see Tim, about that. Tim the, Tebow. Well, big story about to break tomorrow. We'll see if he plays or not. Third and seven. Kessler, this number seven. And a timeout's going to be called by the Bakersfield High School defensive staff. They want to take a good look at things and not a bad timeout because the Centennial Golden Hawks have not even been close to half of the field yet. They haven't made it to the 50-yard line, and this could be a big call for the, uh, the driller defense. High school football game of the week is what you're watching on Bright House Network's exclusive coverage. We were brought to you by Audio Visual Plus and Premier Equipment Rentals. And a quick recap of our season, week one, September 11th to Hatchapi. Traveled down I-58 and got off on Union Avenue, went up to Garces in a very, very good football game. They took care of business. Week two, the Freedom Bowl, Centennial, right here on this campus, hosted Liberty, and they took care of business barely, 10-6, to 6, really not a pretty game. Week three, we went over to Liberty High School where they brought the West High Vikings out. Who Remember, we talked about West High, Kevin, and... Even though they didn't win that game, they sure looked good. And last week, they proved it. And then last week, we personally were out there at Frontier High School. What an impressive squad that Coach Cornford has. And here we are, week five, back at Centennial. The Big Blue Crew, our first game for BHS. After the timeout, there's a flag. So it can only mean one thing. After the defensive <laughs> timeout, they brought out too many guys on the field. Ay, yay, yay. <laughs> Coach, I thought you told me I was in. Uh, I thought during that timeout, you, you said, said we could bring 12 guys out there. Well, that's a good time to, to, to fool somebody. You know, you don't know if they'll catch it or not. It's like in baseball when you call a timeout, take a long time, you come out, the next guy lays down a bunt, and it's usually a base hit. Unbelievable. They went from third and seven on a timeout to third and two, and just like that, a first down, and Kessler's got a lot of room. Still Heads on up. his feet. 
running over the officials. And uh, boy, that's, that's, it has to be frustrating for Coach Gola. They call a defensive timeout on a third and seven. They think they have the play. And just like that, there's too many guys on the field. Makes it a shorter third down attempt. And Kessler just breaks it open for a 12, 13 yard, 13 yard run. Ouch, ouch, ouch. And they're past that half field mark, as I mentioned. First and 10 Golden Hawks. Kessler, no huddle offense, goes to his left. We know he likes to throw that way. Throws it out, and wow, nice pass. Just could not be caught. What a matchup out there. Yeah, Brandon Johnson doing a great job in man coverage there. We talked about him with his speed and ability to close. Just 5'7", 135 pounds, but tough little defender is Brandon Johnson. Uh, the, uh, it was intended out there for Castellano. We know that Castellano's had some very nice receptions already this year that we've covered. 224 left in this first quarter. And now we have a timeout for Centennial. Hey, where are we going next week? By the way, everybody, you are the voters. You decide where we go. Bakersfield.mybrighthouse.com. We're going back to Frontier. Is that what I hear? Is that what I hear? Oh, boy. You have voted, Kern County. I'm hearing for the first time. I wasn't privy to that information, but I'm hearing that we're going back to Frontier. Ridgeview and head coach Dennis Manning is going to take us back over to Frontier where Coach Cornford was. Why don't you set that table for us, Kevin? Well, I, I like... Uh... I like this matchup for, for a couple reasons. That, but I, I love what Dennis Manning is doing over at Ridgeview. He did what Coach Cornford did while he was at West High. He put his tail back at the quarterback position, and he's running that spread offense as well as anybody. He reminds me of a, a poor man's Ryan Matthews does Tyler Dugans. Well, it's going to be a nice football game next week. Ridgeview at Frontier, looking forward to that. We'll go back to that stadium. It's Relatively new and that big sound system and those great lights. So you vote. We don't have any say whatsoever in where we go. Second and ten. Second and ten. Kessler looking around. Has a little bit of gap. Not much. And this is all Cody Kessler. That six yards he gained was on him. Cody Kessler's a little slow getting up here. And, uh, Boy, you should take a look at the audio visual instant replay. Kessler does a good job of getting to the edge. And he's still down, he Kevin. Came down on that ankle a little bit. Well, we are at Centennial High School, and the big man on campus here is Cody Kessler, and he's down right now on the uh, officials. Leaning over him, the athletic trainers and that staff for Centennial High School are attending to their very, very important player, Cody Kessler. Uh, you look at the look at the sideline of the back backup quarterback is now taking some snaps. That's Mark Ritchie, who's a 5'10", 186 pound junior. Just in case Kessler's unable to go. And I'm sure this young man hasn't had to take a whole lot of snaps in the last couple years with uh, the talented Kessler at the quarterback position. Head coach for the Golden Hawks, Coach Nixon. David Rice, one of his assistants. Ryan Renz, Richard Parrott, Justin Crane, Chuck Trujillo. The trainers, Jess Jimenez and Cam Smith over there. They're working overtime right now. That is their quarterback and their captain. and. Essentially, their MVP is going to be carried off the field here, or at least assisted off the field. Looks like it's going to be his left ankle. I don't know if we have a replay of that play to where we can see anything that shows us much. He's I didn't putting a, put a little weight on it now. That's a good sign. Putting a little bit of, a little more weight on it. That's a you know one of those high ankle dings, probably Vance. Kind where, of where you just don't know until yeah. you. Yeah, that hurts like the Dickens, and it, when it happens, it feels like it, it's broke. But that's a great sign right there that he's putting pressure on that. So Mark uh, Ritchie will get to take a few snaps here at the quarterback position. Let's take a look. There's that left ankle. Yeah, just kind of rolled up on him a little bit. And uh, nice job out there by who else? Alfonso Jackson wrapping that ankle up. So Kessler comes off. He's in pain. And now it's third and five, and just like that, you mentioned it, we've got a new quarterback in there. 
Let's see what happens. Our captain Brian Adams on the grass, close to Kessler, close to the trainers. Big play here in this first quarter. Well, they're going to come after Richie here. They're going to unleash the hounds. And a little bit of movement on that centennial offensive line. I think they felt it, could sense it, could hear it, could smell it, could see it, could feel it, and said, ay, ay, ay. Well, that's the one thing that the Golden Hawks had mentioned in the pregame is that they've got a brand new center tonight. So now they got a brand new center and a brand new quarterback. So they've got to get used to Cadence and everything else. And that's tough for the offensive line to do. Still working on Kessler there on the sideline. Now it's third and ten. So from third and five to third and ten with 205 left in this first quarter. VHS doesn't look like they've changed anything. Ball goes up, it's lobbed up, and has a man open. And oh, what a beautiful, beautiful pass. First pass of the night. Who else? Cole Hallam. And boy, Mark Ritchie just showed that he's been a pretty good understudy, Vance. As you take a look at the instant replay, a beautifully thrown ball by Richie, and Hallam does a great job of getting separation there, and who'd have thunk it? First and goal from the seven yard line. Bo Williamson out to greet Hallam. So a great shot in the arm for the Golden Hawks. Now all of a sudden the uh, drillers not showing blitz. And a big gap up there. So Richie throws for 25 yards. Now he runs for three yards. It's going to be second and goal from the four. Brian Adams, nothing fancy on that long first down, just nice execution. Well, Vance, one of the things, anytime you're going to play a lot of bump and run coverage, you're going to have a chance to take some big plays, no matter how great an athlete is on the corner. And that time right there, Centennial and Golden Hawks is a great play. Fonzo looked up, kind of lost the ball, adjusted back to make a play so he couldn't score, but big play. And now you have the Centennial Golden Hawks trying to punch it in. Second and goal from the four. And now, of course, the driller is going to call a timeout. They are uh, trying to get their wits about them right now. 114 left in the first quarter. Timeout VHS, the second timeout taken in the first quarter. I'm Vance Palm, joined by Kevin Keyes, Brian Adams down on the grass. Week five, and we are out at Centennial High School with these Golden Hawks trying to punch it in here from the four yard line. Uh, Vance, one thing I noticed on this series that the offensive line as Centennial has stepped up. And they're stepped up behind the big play of Leo Ruby, big Ryan Hazlitt, and Timmy King. Saw on one of those plays, Timmy King pancake one of the defensive guys. So mm -hmm. talk about the intensity level uh, picking up, especially down here in the red zone. Thank you, Kevin. You on demand, Bakersfield on demand. Channel 300. I mean, you got me hooked on that now, Vance. I'm, I'm watching it just about every night. Channel 300 is just a treasure oh. trove of things to watch and enjoy. Talk yeah. about watching and enjoying second and goal from the four. Three backs behind him, everybody in tight. Fakes to Moore. Oh, my goodness. Open. Touchdown. What a great play action fake that left. Elijah trail wide open in the end zone, but give credit to Myron Moore in the backfield. As you take a look at the audio visual instant replay, nice job by Mark Ritchie of selling that fake. Pretty good looking backup quarterback. Wow, what a great call from the Centennial coaching staff. Brian Nixon and his crew, and a good job of carrying out the fake by the Centennial backfield. Well, just like that, the Golden Hawks march down the field on three or four plays with their backup quarterback and uh, with the P.A. Read from them as we get a look here. What a nice ball fake. Really wasn't anything extraordinary, but every more just a situation. Coaches, oh, it's a great call. Made a great, made a great call. Everybody guessing, everybody no wondering. No doubt, that's just a great play call right there. In, in in a backup quarterback, you don't expect him to come in and throw the football as well as he's doing. But we saw that uh, that great route that Cole Hallam ran and a great pass by Mark Ritchie. Two big passes now. 
that resulted in big plays. So uh, we see a look there of uh, Cody Kessler, the crew surrounding parents included, family, friends, uh, trainers. There's our man Brian Adams there on the left of your screen. And Cody Kessler getting spoken to and uh, not quite sure what the story is yet. We don't have the word yet. Uh, but there's a lot of people down there involved in the discussion about Cody Kessler. And while that is going on, Mark Ritchie's leading his offense down to scoring a touchdown on about four or five plays. A long pass to Cole Hallam for the first down. He ran a couple to get in closer to the end zone. And then the uh, Golden Hawks score. So uh, lively, lively vibrations taking place, taking place out here on the west side. When is the last time that the Drillers have lost three games in a row, Vance? I, I can't remember. Uh, I don't know that. I don't think Coach Gola, in his time, short time being here as a driller coach, has lost more than two straight. Hallam boots it up, and this is going to be taken at about the four-yard line. Here come the drillers looking for some kind of explosive oh, gap. Mercy. And they almost get it. Oh, mercy. Oh, mercy, mercy me. Matt Johns made the tackle for the Golden Hawks here. As you see, young Mercy Masson hang on to that football. Matt Johns, one of the leading tacklers for the Golden Hawks. The drillers will start from their own 26-yard line, and Brian Burrell brings his squad out in a split two wide receiver set. Alfonso Jackson is flanked to the right in that little modified shotgun. I'll call it a pistol. Well, uh, there it is again. Everybody's just battled in tight. A.J. behind him. A.J. takes the handoff. Alfonso Jackson, look out. Fumble! Bo Williamson with the fumble recovery. Bo Williamson with a nose for the football. Recovers that ball for the Golden Hawks. And you talk about a momentum shift. This is a great little run here by Alfonso Jackson, but take a look at the strip here by number 40 wow. for the Golden Hawks. What a nice that was, play by Fry. That was Matt Fry and Bo Williamson. You want to talk bloodline football, that young man's father, Bakersfield Police Department head, big time football player out of North High, baseball player, and grandpa, Big Bill Williamson. All over that, we just, had a nose for that thing and got on it quickly. So between Fry and Williamson, here come the Golden Hawks at the BHS 44-yard line. Look out. Here come the drillers doing what they do. <laughs> well, that's Throwing guy. guys for a loss, a six-yard loss. Big number six is Peter Welsh trying to shift the momentum here. Peter Welsh, just a superstar for the drillers. Last year he was our player of the game. Could have been player of the game three times. Yeah. He was so uh, extraordinarily important here and as we see Cody Kessler shoes are off ice is on the ankle mom and dad down on the field he is down yeah usually when you see the shoe come off and ice on that's uh that's it for the night but we'll have to wait and see as Mark Ritchie takes a high snap and does a good job of running that ball up the middle to pick up a couple short yards Bring up third and about. That'll do it for the 11. first quarter, Kevin. A very important first quarter for both teams. 7-3, Centennial leads by four. But the big story, Cody Kessler out possibly for the game. Back in a moment with the second quarter, high school football game of the week exclusively brought to you by Bright House Networks. Got a job to do? Premier Equipment Rentals is your answer. Residential or industrial, we've got exactly what you need to get the job done. Whether it's a drill, trencher, bobcat, backhoe, or excavator, you can always count on Premier Equipment Rentals. And with our new extended hours, we're available when you need us. Check us out at 3217 Patton Way and 5001 Stein Road, or give us a call to find out more. Don't forget to ask about our weekend specials. Make your next project a breeze with Premier Equipment Rentals. Football's best battle in the drive to the national championship on ESPN. All season long on ESPN, ESPN HD, ESPN2, and ESPN2 HD. College football lives here.
Welcome back, everybody. Oh, my goodness. And they go to uh, a third and 13, a bad snap. Centennial starts the second quarter off with a horrible play, and uh, that'll be fourth and long. As we came back into the second quarter, we had a shot there of Cody Kessler down on the trainer's table. He is done for the night, it appears. We will get a report from Brian Adams eventually, not yet, but we'll eventually get some type of an update from Brian as we start the second quarter. But for all intents and purposes, it looks as though Cody Kessler done for the evening. Ice on the ankle. And that brings up a fourth and 30. The Golden Hawks will obviously have to punt. Perfect snap. And not a bad punt whatsoever. It's going to be taken at about the 30-yard line down there by Johnson. Oh. Brandon Johnson's Whoa. knee was down. A punishing hit that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon's going, wait a minute, I was down. You can't hit me like that. That was a great uh, long snap. You know, excellent snap. You called it, uh, Vance. That was Tyler Ramirez, the long snapper, 5'9", 151-pound junior. Ooh, that was claw. He, he wasn't down on the reception. It was down on the attempt to get some traction and take off to the right. There's and, that uh, pop there. Ooh, nice, almost like a free hit. <laughs> almost like a free hit. Maybe. Johnson wanted the flag. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, first and ten, the drillers. Burrell, and there's action all oh, over the place. Boy. There was a very, very active pre-snap by the drillers and I believe it'll be on Bakersfield High School. Boy, Jared Norris came in from his linebacker position and laid the, the boom on the running back there. I like him from his linebacker position. Jared Norris, 6'2", 208 pounds. Big hit, you're right, Kevin, that's a wallop. Should be second and 15. Got some help from big Leo Ruby on that defensive line. Keep an eye on him. No, sorry, first and 15. Burrell puts the ball in the air. Nice catch out there by Johnson, and Johnson's still on his feet, and can you believe that? Just like that. A first and 10 from the 48-yard line. That did not take long to make up those yards. Well, Brandon Johnson runs a great route here. Nice little out route, and Burrell puts the ball right on the money. And take a look at that speed by Brandon Johnson as he cuts the ball up for a big first down. Well, Centennial just waiting on the run. And a lot of real estate out there. Alfonso Jackson tried to get outside. And uh, he cannot. Nice job by the Centennial defense. And they run him out of bounds at about the 48-yard line on the other side of the football field. Tyler Thornton did a good job coming up from his cornerback position here, reading the run. Comes up and does a great job of closing that and pressing Alfonso out, out of bounds. Final play, second and five. Right at midfield, the ball exactly on the 50, second and five, just underway in the second quarter. Burrell, oh boy. Ran into big number 77, Leo Ruby. Controlling that A gap from his nose guard position. And also a big hit by Jared Norris. Norris socked him as well. Still no word yet on Cody Kessler. We're just making our assumptions. Obviously, left ankle out for a while at least. We'll wait for the word from Brian Adams. Burrell looks to his right, has uh, a man open in the corner. Uh -oh. Look at this. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Ooh, just over through the wide open. BHS receiver looked like Hunt out there. Was that Walter Hunt? Yeah, Bo Williamson came up to press coverage there at cornerback. You see Burrell just over through Hunt. But that's a, a pretty good route and good separation by, by Hunt, who they thought might not play tonight, but... He's getting some action on both sides of the ball. The explosive speed of Hunt. Goodness gracious. He had separation in a big way. Brings up fourth and four. High snap and a low rugby style punt. And uh, taken down about the 12 yard line out there by the drillers. That'll bring up first and 10 Centennial. Got a question the 
punt coverage guy there catching that ball. It looked like it still might have had some roll to it. <laughs> his room, his teammates told him too, said, hey man, I had another 10 yards on yeah, it. Nasita's going, hey man, you messing up my average. Nasita, one of those wrestling names out of the Driller family that we see playing on the football field. You take a look at. All right, speaking of a Driller, let's go down to our Driller, Brian Adams. Uh, what's the word on Cody Kessler? Well, Vance, he rolled the ankle pretty good. They're going to take some precautions. He's not going to come back tonight. They got the ice on it. They're going to get some x-rays just to make sure that nothing uh, is uh, bone-wise and structurally done. So, and hopefully he'll be back next week. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate that. Cody Kessler, for all intents and purposes, from what Brian is saying, he will not return tonight. That's a given. And uh, he's just a uh, talented and very gifted young man. But uh, if he's down, he's down. And that means the Golden Hawks, Kevin, are now going to have to piece together another game plan. Well, it looks like they've got a pretty good backup in Mark Ritchie. And guys usually will do two things in the situation when your leader goes down. You can either, you can either fold or you can step it up. And so far, the Golden Hawks have stepped it up. Second and nine. Ritchie has a host of receivers out to the right side takes a high snap Richie throws it out here look out and oh goodness should have been picked off and it is not and Johnson's on his knees praying and wishing and hoping he had another shot at that one not only could it have been picked off it could have been 12. Take, it could have been six take a look at the drillers defense line boy they just loaded up on it and they set the, the house after uh Richie and that's the one thing you can do when you got talented defensive backs like the drillers do is you can send everybody and put them in man coverage and put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Brings up a third and nine. The complexion of this football game has changed in a heartbeat. Cody Kessler down and out for this game. The drillers have not been able to capitalize yet. Frankly, they haven't been able to do pretty much anything on offense yet. Defense keeping this thing close. Oh, boy, Richie thought he may be able to do some type of a stalled, delayed quarterback sneak, and that was not the answer. We take a look at the audio-visual instant replay. Emilio Cantu just doing a great job from his down position there on the defensive line, and also big number 62, Anthony Davis, from his nose tackle position. Two guys that are just erasing the line of scrimmage tonight. Anthony Davis got him listed in the program at 6'3", 250 pounds. Almost a block. Oh, Hallam just barely got it off, and now it... <laughs> AJ thought about it for a second, man. You know Alfonso wanted to grab that ball and take off, but he did the very smart thing, got out of the way. Look at this. What about a 65-yard punt? Yeah, yeah, that's not bad at all. That'll help your average there, Cole Hallam. 65-yarder. Well, first and 10 BHS, 8.52 left here in the first half. The story so far is that Cody Kessler, quarterback for the BHS, uh, sorry, for the Centennial Golden Hawks, will be out for the evening on a play that we watched and saw on the replay, the audio-visual replay. He ran off to the right side, and Alfonso Jackson tackled him and kind of wrapped him up. Didn't look to be an extraordinarily good, hard takedown whatsoever, but as we know, it doesn't have to be that way, but ankle gave him some trouble. He kind of hobbled off and uh, he's out. Burrell fakes one hand off, gives to the other end. Whoa, what a nice bit of running this is. And a nice job out there by Nasita. That's a great looking counter trap there that the drillers ran. As we take a look at this on the audio visual instant replay, in, inside handoff, and they're following big number 75, Mark Van Kopp on that lead block. It's just a great job by Nasita picking up the first down. First and 10. Burrell has a man open, floats it out there, should be caught. Oh, my goodness gracious. Wesley Drummer. Boy, I'm sure Wesley will be kicking himself on that. That's a great route. And a good ball by Woo, Burrell goodness. as you take a look at it here. Drummer just outran everybody. 
Yikes. Just couldn't come down with a catch. And Wesley Drummers, as fine a young man as you'll meet, great student athlete, taking care of business in the classroom, over 3.0 uh, GPA. Second and 10, the Golden Hawks averting a sure touchdown. Drummer makes that catch. Now they go right up the middle. This time it's going to be Jackson. And Jackson looking for some room. Oh, what a beautiful runner he is. Whenever oh. he gets his space, he's just a talented, gifted, natural, instinctive runner. Yeah, not only is he excellent in space, as you talked about, Vance, look at the patience right here as he picks his shots, just follows his blocker and got explosive speed and knows when to lower his shoulder so he can pick up the extra yards to finish wow. up the run. First and 10, Driller starting to chomp up some yardage here. Nice job of the Golden Hawks defense here. Walter Hunt. Walter Hunt, the ball carrier. Oh, I like this matchup out here with uh, Wesley Drummer on Kyle Thornton. Second and nine. Clock ticking away. We're still in the first half out here at Centennial High School. Week five of the high school football game of the week. Couldn't be a more splendid evening. This time the handoff goes to Hunt, and Hunt doesn't get too far. Well, that's that same little counter trade that they ran earlier with Nasidas. But Hunt's got to cut this ball up sooner. As you take a look at it, his, his lane, his running lane, was right there Boom. inside the block there. You almost got to be a wing T style running back to run that little counter trade. I'm sure that's something that the coaches up in the box will take a look at. Our audiovisual replay, not only are they the sponsors of it, but our Bright House guys knowing and can read the mind of Kevin Keyes and know when to stop it. Great job, fellas. Third and eight. It's a big play for BHS right here. Burrell fakes the pitch, goes to his left, stops, has a man open, should be caught. Oh, my goodness. And Alfonso Jackson looks up and says, was the pass to me or was it to Drummer? Who was it to? Well, it looked like somebody ran a wrong route there. I mean, uh, Hunt, uh, Wesley Drummer was on a little post corner here, but Fa Alfonso was coming across on the post from the other side. Wow. The ball was just thrown in between both of them there, but both of them looked like they had a step or two on the defenders. Exactly. Both guys were open. Yeah. Neither got the football. That brings up a fourth and eight. And the, the drillers will go for a long field goal, a 45-yarder by McMahon. Shouldn't be McMahon's that troublesome for this young man and look at this everybody boom nice field goal that's a nice nice field goal and that's the only scoring they've had so far two field goals for the drillers seven six high school football game of the week brought to you by audio visual plus and premier equipment rentals a pleasure to have everybody here tonight kevin what's up everybody's talking about you know this offense for centennial and, and rightfully so with the with a talented player like Cody Kessler, who went down earlier in the ball game, but but how about this defense of Centennial? We saw them against Liberty, they shut shut Liberty down, and tonight we're seeing it against an explosive offense of the Bakersfield High School Drillers. Bend but don't break. Brian Adams, let's get a bit of an insight from you on Bakersfield High School football. As tradition goes, there is as important as any football in the state of California, let alone the Valley, let alone this city. Your uh, your prognosis so far in 09 on BHS football. Well, I think they're trying to find out who they are. You know, they're trying to get themselves in a rhythm, ready to make a playoff run. Offensively, you can see they have some spurts of big play capability, but they just don't seem to have that consistency drive to drive. And defensively, they've been plagued by giving up big plays. So if they can tighten up those things, when you're playing with a young team, that tends to happen. So he's hoping that those guys can get in the rhythm, tighten up the mistakes, and they'll be able to have that lockdown defense they've had in Golo's tenure so far, and then the explosive offense to match it. Brian mentioned it, the mistakes, the turnovers. That's just been very, very noticeable this year, Kevin. Well, they're a young squad, as we mentioned. they got eight or nine juniors on the defense and that's going to happen when you have a young squad but nobody's talking about the toughness of their schedule they played five uh top division one football teams in their in their or four top division one football teams in their first four games canyon stockdale liberty, liberty centennial buchanan 
the nature of the beast when you're the Bakersfield High Drillers. Yeah, it is. It, but what that does is it sets up the strength of schedule for later on. This is probably their last tough game. The Drillers will probably win out the rest of the season and have some momentum going into the playoffs. And, and, and with all these youngsters on their squad towards the end of the year, they can make a big, big time run at the playoffs. Wow. Big statement. I like it. First and 10. Quarterback is Mark Ritchie taking over for the Golden Hawks. Ritchie looks down the sideline, lobs it out there, and safely throws it over the head of Alfonso Jackson as well as is the intended receiver out there, Tim Martinez. Keeps it out of trouble. <laughs> it's a Ritchie kid. He's not afraid to put it up, is he? No, he's not, but that's great coverage here by Alfonso Jack Jackson from his cornerback position. That's where you love these little stop routes, man. I love the stop route. You don't see it a whole lot in high school football. Six and a half left here in the first half. Look out, everybody. They come to the right, right side. Great wide round. open. He's wide open. Woo! Look at this, everybody. Castellano has a ton of room. And Castellano gets him up to the 45, 46-yard line. What a beautiful play. Flag yeah, late, and I mean a, real late. Uh, not a very smart play at the end of the play here by a Centennial player. As you take a look at Castellano, a little rub route there. But one of the Centennial players Ouch. came in through a late block on Peter Welsh at the end of that play that is going to erase a pretty good play. It still will be a first down because it happened after the play. But well, you talking about moving the chains back. Boy, Nixon's not going to be very happy about this. Yikes. It's a dead, dead ball, personal foul. As Kevin mentioned, they keep their first down, but man, oh man. In a game where a 25-yard first down is <laughs> as valuable as ever, that hurts to march it back. Six and a half left here in this first half. Seven to six the score. Has all the makings of a nail biter in the fourth quarter, but we're still in the second. Richie looks at a driller defense that's leaving the interior of the football field wide open. They come after him with seven guys. They put a lot of pressure on him. A Great beautiful job. play to Cole Hallam. Hallam. Boy, you talking about cool in the pocket with Mark Richie, Vance. Great job of staying in his pocket and credit Hallam coming back towards his quarterback there, an excellent route as you take a look at Richie here, extending the play with his feet. Hallam runs a nice route, picking up the first down. Well, Captain, the entire middle of the football field is open here for Richie if he can make it happen. Oh, a bad snap over the head of Richie. Fumble! Ball still loose. The drillers say they have it. Oh boy. That's gonna bring up. Here we, they get a first down. Second down. They get a long play and a penalty. They get this big long play and now a bad snap or a, whatever it was. And uh, yikes. Two steps forward and one step back. That's what happens when you have a new center and a new quarterback. Well, Cody Kessler is up off of the training table and he's standing up on the sidelines, wants to get a bird's eye view of this game now, and he will not be playing and gets hugs and pat on the back from a lot of guys down there. But uh, now the man of the hour, Mark Ritchie. Second and 27, the whistles blow, the flags fly, and now there's discombobulation. Take that. Oh, boy. 30 days to a more powerful vocabulation is Vance Palm. Vocabulation from Dr. Kevin Keyes. <laughs> Remember yeah. that book? Did you have that back in middle school? No. 30 days to a more powerful vocabulary. You didn't have that out in Arvin? You study that with Jeff Adams? Dr. Ryder didn't have that for you out there at Arvin? Look at this. Second and 32 all of a sudden. Another high snap. Richie in trouble. Hit hard. And there's our man again that we just talked about, Anthony Davis. AD. Yikes. Is that, Yikes. Is that a familiar name, Vance? Is Anthony it? Davis? It is now. 
Remember the great running back out of the University of Southern California, Anthony Davis? Sure do. Pow! Look at big AD. Well, all of a sudden it's third and forever, and these Golden Hawks cannot afford to have these penalties and miscues as they're trying to gain some ground with their second quarterback in the football game. Talented young man, and he's proven it, but uh, the other 10 guys have to pitch in and help out. Third and 29. My fumble! And that's going to be BHS football, no doubt about it. Well, almost on cue. Not as if our, I wished it or guy. wanted it. Our big guy, number 62, AD. Jolly on the spot here as he falls on the football. Anthony Davis has been around the ball all night for the drillers as he recovers the fumble with 4.28 to go in the first half. Drillers threatening the score here, Vance. Wow, wait, you talk about handing it to him. And they were at midfield about two minutes ago, three minutes ago, the Golden Hawks. Burrell on a keeper. Burrell battling himself to get to the end zone. And he will bring it to a first and goal from the nine yard line. And, uh, and he, he's like almost like a python. You don't know when he's gonna strike and then pow, he strikes. Look at Burrell. Burrell is a talented running quarterback himself. And thank goodness for Richie Peckfelder for the Golden Hawks as he saved the touchdown there. Peckfelder comes in and keeps it from being six. And now it's first and goal from the nine. And Burrell will have Welsh behind him. And in motion goes Hunt. So with four minutes left here in the first half, the Golden Hawks now wondering what in the world just happened. We had the ball up the... 50 yard line about 120 seconds ago and now the drillers getting ready to punch it in i don't know how many of you last night watched the missouri and nebraska in the pouring rain missouri was up 12 nothing i go to the bathroom i come back it's 13 12 nebraska you just never know golden hawks had one of their uh, alumni playing in that game look at this aj Boy. just crunches it in Touchdown, BHS, and that offensive line oh, my just goodness. shoved everybody out of the, wa oh, out of the way. They, they, they did, Vance. They just exploded off the line. He got a great lead block from Peter Welsh and big number 53 there for the drillers, Marshall Polson. Wow. <laughs> just rode those guys all the way to the end zone. A name we haven't mentioned until right now, Marshall Polson. 6'3", <laughs> 235 pounds. Senior. McMahon will attempt the PAT to make it a 13-7 game. And uh -oh. did he get it? He didn't. Unbelievable. The power boot of McMahon shanks it to the left. And you're talking about one of the premier field goal kickers in the city. And he just well, I think everything was hurried. It. Everything was hurried there, Vance. It like kind of rushed it and threw off his timing. Wow. So 331 left here in the first half, 12-7. to seven. Uh, interesting score, interesting game. Two field goals and a touchdown with a missed PAT for the Drillers gives them a five-point lead. The Golden Hawks, a little more conventional, marched it down the field, and then their star quarterback gets hurt. The reserve comes in, scores a TD for the Golden Hawks, but here's the touchdown for the Drillers, and we see in that great replay angle from our Premier Equipment Rentals scissor lift from this high up, you get this, a good view of how Powerful that offensive line here for the drillers and Mark, Mark Van Kopp Mark Van is Kopp, one of them. Yeah, absolutely. Boy, he just pushed his guy off the line of scrimmage. Big Emilio Cantu. Remember him? Remember him? Well, we talked about the uh, the outcome of this game might be decided by who makes the less uh, mistakes. Golden Hawks with a huge mistake in their own territory as the drillers capitalize and you see McMahon <laughs> put that ball still, out of the end zone. He's still chafing a little bit yeah. from that missed PAT. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Brian Adams, uh, you played in a lot of big football games, whether it was BHS or UCLA. You know, when the quote-unquote star player goes down, the game doesn't stop, does it, B? It never does, Vance. And I think it has to happen if people have to pick up. And one of the things you guys alluded to was you have a brand-new center, and a quarterback. And one of the things the center, two series in a row, you've had some high snaps. You know, when that fumble, the snap was high, you start rushing it, 
and you had a, a miscommunication with your running back and your quarterback. But somebody's need to talk to the center, settle them down. The game's only 12 7 We got a lot of football to play. They got to rally around together and play as a unit as 11 and not worry about one man taking them somewhere. That's a great point, Cap. Ooh, Myron Moore hit hard by Welsh. There's a matchup for you right there. Myron Moore and Welsh. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> uh, two cap awards possibly right there. Yeah, Peter Wells, one of my favorite high school football players. We talked about him. Not the biggest guy on the football. It's number six. You talk about a Division I player, probably a Division II body. Pow! But all heart. Look at the leg drive by Peter Wells, the Eagle Scout. Outstanding young man. Second and nine, under three minutes left. In this first half, what a nice football game. Richie has everybody coming. Look out. Uh -oh. And oh my goodness. Okay. Not really confusion in the route, just wasn't executed well enough to where we see Castellano and yeah. Martinez somebody, run into each other. Somebody, it was a little rub route here. They were successful on this earlier. They rubbed each other out. Yeah, it looks like uh, somebody ran the wrong route. Run the wrong depth. Wrong there depth. You Thank you, Brian. There you go. There you go. That's why he's our captain. He's a receiver. <laughs> My man Martinez is having a little bit of a rough outing so far in the first half. He didn't really take off on that one pass that Alfonso was defending on. So let's just see what they can do if they can settle down. They may go. Oh, fumble! And now it's picked up, and look at this. A broken play. We'll see what happens with it, and uh, it stays broken as Grimes tried to do something with it, and wow, the Golden Hawks really struggling here on offense. Well, there is that center quarterback exchange again that's just not happening for the Golden Hawks, and that's one thing you got to do if you're going to run the spread formation offense out of the shotgun, you've got to have a great center quarterback exchange, and they're not getting it this wow. game. I hope everybody realizes what Peter Welsh just did. I don't know if we'll see that replay, if we can see that replay one more time. You see a broken play. Peter Welsh, everybody, was on the other side of the football field from a screen standpoint, from your TV screen. He was on the top of the screen, and he ran from the BHS side of the football field all the way back around and tripped up Thomas Grimes here. Watch this at the very end of your play. I happened to be watching it with a naked eye when it happened, and Peter Welsh was on the other side of the football field, and here he comes, number six. And he trips up Grimes, so he figured he covers about 45, 50 yards laterally to make that play. That a boy, young man. Effort, effort, effort. I guess so. Not well, only does he excel on the football field, Vance, he's a 4.0 student in the classroom. Last year, one of our players of the game. Fourth and 19, Centennial is going to have to punt it again. Oh, oh, Cole Hallam in trouble. Cole Hallam is going to try to put the football up, and he does. And uh, had he not done that, that would have yeah. been a safety. That's great athleticism there by Cole Hallam to just get that thing away. Boy, that's a big-time play by number four. Watch this, Kern County. There's Hallam. He feels the pressure. He says, yeah. Great Yikes. vision. Great vision there. And he thinks, maybe I can get a first down. Nopes. I'll punt it. Wow. And uh, that's huge. Got enough of that football. <laughs> I still think Coach Gola will want to know why uh, his return man <laughs> fell on the ball. First and 10, second and 17. Uh, 217 left here. Burrell on a keeper. Burrell, nine yard gain. Our captain, Brian Adams. What do you think about Brian Burrell? You know, Vance, he's thrown some very nice balls. Only one uh, ball, bad pass I see him throw was the one with indecisive what players going to throw to. Other than that, he's thrown the ball well. He's also run the ball well. What I like is he's doing with only what he knows he can do. He's playing with inside himself. He's not trying to make plays like Alfonso Jackson. He's doing the rail show. Well, speaking of that, they hand off to A.J., but a nice job out there by number 42, Brody Scott. Brody Scott, another sophomore on this defense for the Golden Hawks. Nice yeah. play. Yeah, also had some help by number 55, Timmy King. But yeah, I, I, I like what uh, Burrell's doing, Brian. He, you, you mentioned that he's staying with inside himself, but boy, on that dive option, he really sells that fake and does a great job of reading and keeping him 
hanging on to the football to pick up some big gains. You know, and that's really the key. The better the quarterback can fake, we saw it last week with the kid from North High for two years. He Fumble! Well, <laughs> we're talking about him, and he, he coughed it up, but the drillers got it back. Go ahead, Brian, finish your thought. You know, and, and that's what Kevin was saying. When you get a quarterback that really does a good job of putting that ball in that belly, it keeps that defense on. I don't know if the dive man has it or he has it. He does a great job also reading. He knows when to let it go and when to keep it. And at 6-3, always a threat to drop that ball in, too, from the air. Fourth and one. Interesting. What happened? Did they get it? Did they get it? Uh-oh. Did they get it? I think his momentum there and where they mark his forward progress is going to lead to a first down. The Golden Hawks say no. A lot of directions out there. A lot of players pointing. Well, if that's the mark. Boy, look at the spot. If that's the mark, <laughs> I don't know. Boy, you got to question the spot there. Well, if that's where it is, that's where it is. And if that's where it is. It didn't look like they got it from up here, but I tell you what, it looked like he had a lot more forward progress than that. It is what it is. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying, Vance. I'm just saying. We had a little chat today. At our Apparently, my Fridays have turned into a uh, country club tournament golf i don't know how but uh today we had a discussion with some highly educated people hey it's not they don't get it well credit the golden hawk defense there for really bringing everybody to make that stop burrell on his quarterback keeper running a little bit high That's but exactly Jar jared norris richie peckfelder leo ruby My entire <laughs> Centennial defense. Well, the, the, my thought on that, what I, we were golfing today, and, the, and what, they said one of the most aggravating terms is it is what it is. Some of, somebody came up with the fact that that's one of the most aggravating terms. It is what it is. But it is what it is. If that's where the place is, it is what it is. They don't get it. So I'm out. I am out. There it is. It is what it is. The placement gives Centennial a first down. They're able to kill the clock here and keep BHS from putting some more points on the board. That helps, that's important. What'd you shoot today, Vance? None of your business. Wow. Just scramble. Sore. Scramble. Took second place, what are you gonna do? That's it for the first half. 12-7, nice football game. A lot of drama, a lot of big plays, a lot of big penalties. And here we are at the end of the first half, Bakersfield High School 12, Centennial 7. We'll be back with the third quarter right after this. Here's how it feels to have TV that's interactive from Bright House Networks. It's like getting into a time machine, controlling where you go and when. Because interactive TV is the only way to travel back in time and start over a show already playing. Choose programs that you start on demand. Even set your DVR to look ahead in time and record future episodes. Take off to a whole new world of entertainment with TV that's interactive from Bright House Networks. Same, yet all seem to have one thing in common. They're depressing, but it's not all totally brutal. Escape from Monday with Monday Night Football on ESPN. The glorious reward to your day. ESPN, serving football fans everywhere. Welcome back. We're about to start the third quarter. A very, very interesting 
football game that we're calling and you're watching. Cody Kessler, the quarterback that we've spoken so many times about this season, the junior, will not play the rest of the football game. He is on the sidelines at the trainer's table, and he went out to do the second half pleasantries and salutations with the officials on crutches. And there he is right there. And uh, we have heard that he will not return tonight. And x-rays and all of those things will follow over the weekend. But he's not playing. And we had some special guests up here on top of the uh, announcer's booth tonight. Jamie Minnie from Centennial High School's athletic genre. Knows all of the coaches. Spends a lot of time with the coaches. And one Valerie Dameron. Valerie Dameron up on the announcer's booth tonight to say hello to me, her brother, and one of her longtime friends and schoolmates, Kevin Keyes, as a bullet of a kick starts off the second half. And, I mean, that was a three iron that just slammed its way through the football field and caught down there by DJ Williams. Wow. Look at this kick, man. This thing is just a bullet. Pow. Well, that was a line drive, and DJ did his great job of hauling that in and picking up a few extra yards before he's brought down by Myron Moore and Brett Harmel. Burrell starts out on his own 20. Three yard line flips it out to Alfonso. He's got plenty of room out in the flats. Nice little spin move. Nice open field tackle there by Jared Norris on the talented Alfonso Jackson. As you take a look at the audio visual instant replay, Alfonso usually very dangerous out in space. And <laughs> Jared Norris got away with a little trip there. Not illegal to do on defense as you're tackling. and. Matt Fry also came in to provide run support. Burrell gives the ball to Hunt up the middle. Huge gain of 11 and a first down for the drillers. Walter Hunt showing some explosion here as he picks up two big blocks from his offensive line right up through the A gap and a huge gain. Well, Captain Brian Adams, your thoughts on that first half overall? Well, man, it was a uh, very, uh, once again, a, a un un unbalanced game. We saw up and down. Nobody really made any great big plays. But you see the drillers now starting to wear out the Golden Hawk, I think, as a flag comes in. But just never had a real good rhythm to it again. You hear the captain talking about rhythm and how important it is at this level. I mean, if you're looking at, you know, a major Division One college program, or of course when you get into the up in the NFL, rhythm is maybe not as crucial because of the talent level and, and the schemes that get thrown out there. But at this level of high school football, rhythm is important. Get into a good flow. And as Brian mentioned so aptly, it just never seemed to really get going for either school. Well, part of the reason that the Golden Hawks aren't having any rhythm is they're without their starting quarterback, Cody Kessler. But more important, they're, out, they're without their starting center, Alex Trahil, who went down, I, I believe, in the Redwood game early in the season. But those are two key components to an offense, and that's the initial same exchange from center to quarterback. Awfully important. Penalty on the driller, so it marches it back to the 42-yard line of Centennial. First and 10. We're just underway here in the second half. Burrell looks, wants to go deep, wants to go downtown. He makes a nice move, and oh, uh, oh boy, almost broke free for a big run, but tripped up and goes down at the 35-yard line. That was a great job by Trent Miller to come up from his linebacker position to tackle Burrell in the open field. But if he doesn't make that tackle there, Burrell's going to run for about 20 or 30 more yards on the play. Five-yard gain Second. by Burrell. On a second and five, oh, Alfonso Jackson. Great second effort there. Maybe, maybe, I don't think he got it, but he got awfully close. Boy, did he extend to try and pick up this first down. Boy, I hope we got a shot of this on the instant replay. I'm talking about a great second effort. Here it is here. Alfonso finds a little crease there. Nice little spin move, but look at this. Extending, he's not down yet. You're right. 
And boy, he came awful close to getting that first down. Great job, camera crew, on the audio visual instant replay. Brings it to a third and two. They go to him again. This oh, time, AJ boy. trying to get outside, makes one move, two moves. Oh, a big punishing hit up there at the end of the play by <laughs> Tyler Thornton. And uh, oh! Well, that's a uh, dead ball personal foul. That's going to go against Alfonso, unsportsmanlike conduct in the drillers. Officials right on the spot there and obviously heard something that they didn't like as you take a look at AJ here. Bounce the ball out front and Tyler Thornton come out and lay a pretty big hit on Alfonso. And I think that's kind of what got under the skin of AJ right there. That late hit, but he again popped up and had some words for Tyler Thornton and ouch, that hurts. Well, there's no place uh, for that in any sport. Officials doing a great job of handling that as you see a lot of uh, sirens in the area coming on field. Ambulance and sirens as Nasita low line drive punt. Takes oh, a what a beautiful bounce. punt. And goes out of bounds. <laughs> a beautiful punt on a fourth and 14. Boy, there's a, two more flags coming down. It's starting to get a little chippy down there, Vance. Well. Last thing you want in any competitive arena is unnecessary penalties that you know, that hurt one or two of the teams, and it looks like it's uh, just going to be more salt on the wound here. We got a little bit of emergency medical procedures going on. Not quite sure what the story is. Someone on the BHS side is needing some attention, so we have ambulances. We have up fire. in the stands. Up in the stands, not down on the field. We'll let you know if we know anything about that, but it looks as though it's being handled. But down on the field, the flag Vance was a personal foul against the Golden Hawks now. Oh boy, so now it's first and 10 from the four yard line. Well, they're deep, deep in the hole right oh, now. And Eight 18 left in the third quarter. Golden Hawks break out of their huddle on the sidelines. Mark Ritchie did a fine, fine job tonight coming in under duress and threw a touchdown pass to start things off. Well, nice like, handoff. I like this offense that they, they came out in. They came out with a two tight end set and a heavy backfield, just content with grinding out the ball on the ground. Centennial obviously making some adjustments. Second and seven. The big time adjustment that they made is now that the quarterback is underneath the center, Vance. That's a good call, Kevin. He's right behind center. Sucks everybody in. And look at this, Myron Moore. Myron Moore. Boy, that's, that's Woo! excellent coaching. Talking about going in at halftime, coming out, making adjustments. Hey, we're not getting the, the, the exchange from our center quarterback. We got two new guys in the ball game. Let's go to a heavy set. Let's rely on this. Talented offensive line that we got and talented backs and Myron Moore. Let's give Myron Moore some touches and see what happens. I'd love the, 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 the move here that Brian Nixon has made. Let's use our tight ends out there. We have a, you know, a big tight end. And, Get to the edge. And Absolutely. Jared Norris. And Norris out there on the left side doing what he can do. So now three backs behind Richie. Richie now hands after Myron Moore again. Myron Moore pushed out to the side. A big punishing hit put on by Myron Moore this time. That's the one thing I love about a two tight end set. It allows you to run inside and Ooh. out as those tight ends seal the edge. And Myron Moore does a great job of getting to the edge, picking up some extra yardage there after initial contact. It's third quarter going on at a decent clip. Seven minutes left. Three running backs behind Richie again. This time Richie right behind center, as Kevin said. On a second and six, they pitch it out to Moore. Moore's going to have to get outside and make some type of cut up field. He does. Cannot get the first down, though. Nice job of the BHS defense. 
Well, Captain, you know, Kevin talked about this nice switch, nice adjustment. It's halftime, but when the rubber hits the road, man, if that BHS defense is still where it is, <laughs> Centennial still has that challenge. Well, one thing, Vance, I like what Coach Keyes, what the, you call him the Dr. Keyes said, oh, is that they wow. made adjustment at halftime and they decided to do, use what their strength is right now is the power. It's not running from that spread offense. But be careful if you're the drillers because you come up too much, that tight that's end right. will pop out. That's right. And he'll be wide open. Absolutely. And that's what's happening right now, uh, Brian. They're sucking them in. They're loading up in the box with eight or nine guys in the box and a play action here and a guy like Norris at tight end and also uh, – Elijah Trail also at tight end. Those are two guys that can stretch the field from the tight end position. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you, Kevin. And they might have to make an adjustment now just because they're down in distance. But if they can get that going again and get back to that power offense and set it up just like you said, Kevin, because one thing they know from film is the drillers have made some miscues with these young players on defense with assignments. So you might be able to get uh, a couple times and get a big play for yourself. Elijah Trail, by the way, is number six in a whale of a football game in the Freedom Bowl versus Liberty. He's a six-foot, 190-pound senior tight end linebacker, Elijah Trail. What a player. Now they're might... spreading them out again, Vance. Sorry about that. They're here in a in a open formation. They throw this out. What a beautiful catch. A great, great throw by Richie, who took a punishing hit. And young Thomas Grimes laid out for that ball. That's a big-time play from a sophomore who's uh, – Coming into his own here, take a look at Mark Ritchie, who, by the way, Vance, led this junior varsity football team last year in Woo! a great catch by Thomas oh, Grimes. Oh, oh. Thomas Ritchie uh, won the league last year as, as a JV quarterback. So he's no stranger to big-time games. Well, he's a junior, and he's now in a situation where his name is going to be known instantly tonight around Kern County. Ritchie, now they... Hike it to Myron Moore. Myron Moore <laughs> running for daylight. One Boy. big move and got him nine yards. One big move got him nine yards. David Price missed the tackle, and boy, Myron made oh. all that happen himself. Yeah, that was a direct snap as you take a look at the audio visual instant replay. Direct snap to Myron Moore, but take a look at this block if they catch it on the replay by Castellanos here. There it was. As he cuts the ball upfield. Hang in there. Big time run, seven yard run there that should have. Looked like it was going to be a loss there. Still having problems with the exchange. This third quarter has swam along nicely. Now it's second and three. They go inside, and Grimes is in trouble. And he gets thrown for about a four-yard loss. They're trying to stretch this offense out and get it to the sidelines, and it's uh, going to be very difficult with players such as Welsh. David Price is the guy who slips through here, number seven, for the drillers came in from his linebacker position along with Peter Welsh to close things off. Is it me or is Welsh? <laughs> Welsh is everywhere. I said he plays with so much energy. He's got an engine, and remember, he, he plays both sides of the field. You're talking about a guy who will not quit. Captain Brian Adams, what do you like here, Cap? What do you like? Well, I like to get some kind of isolation, and you have it right there. There's no safety back, so your slot receiver to the top of the field has an advantage. They can get it off, but there's Welch Whoa. doing what he does, wow. makes plays, guys. He's just a playmaker. Great call, Brian. He was joined in at the very end by Cantu, but that Bakersfield High School crowd, very appreciative of Welch. Well, Welch is going to get a lot of uh, free runs like this because of the solid downplay of guys like Anthony Davis and Emilio Cantu, when you have three down linemen that one of them draws a double coverage, that's going to leave a running lane for the linebackers to come in and make big plays like Peter Welsh just did. And just like that, fourth and 14, whistles called, whistles blew right as the ball was snapped. And Coach Gola looks back at his, I don't know whether it was his team or his coaching staff, irate. I don't know what Coach Gola was actually so hot about, but he was hot. Next week, are you kidding me? We are back to Frontier. You, the Kern County voter, went on bakersfield.mybrighthouse.com and voted where you want to send us. We have nothing to do with this. And now we're going out to Frontier. Ridgeview at Frontier. Wow. 
the big blue crew again. I tell you what, one of the greatest things about being at Frontier last week was seeing that band. I tell you what, if you want to see a great, outstanding high school band, go see Frontier's band under the direction of Dr. Doug Kelly. Never heard a high school band play Tusk. Tended a lot of, tended a lot of, uh, a lot of USC games back in the day and heard it, but Tusk. My Arvin High Bears. Arvin never played Tusk. Are you out of your mind? The Crimson Bear Brigade. Bump, bump, ba dump, bump, bump, bump. You were in the band at Arvin, weren't you? you were, the, were you the, what do you call that the guy? The Crimson up Bear Brigade of the 80s. You lost your mind. Was that Kevin. Dr. Lloyd Shires uh, under the direction of Lloyd Shires? Or Mike, who was the? Mike Bone. Mike Bone. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's another great. 400 strong. Hey, let great you guys in this band stuff go. There's a football game going oh, on. Oh, here we go. Speaking of great band directors. Here we go. Here we go. How about Mr. Hans at Highland High School back in the day? How about him? He's a great band director. There's Lauren Naworski talking about bloodline football. Her mother, Julie Gimble, was a cheerleader back at Highland High back in the late 70s, early 80s. Bloodline cheerleader football. 308 left in his third quarter. First and 10. Drillers. 12 7. Handoff goes to Dakota Velasquez and Velasquez. Oh, it's good to see these wrestlers out on the football field. Take a look at the audio visual instant replay is Dakota Velasquez getting action on both sides of the football, linebacker and fullback. They give Peter Welsh a little break here, Vance. You talked about Peter being all over the football field. He finally gets a little break here. Second and six. Inside give to AJ. Jackson. Loses his footing, brought down at the 20, and that'll bring up I'm about third. And Look who made the tackle, Vance. The quarterback. <laughs> Number eight. Mark Ritchie. Third and five. Drillers struggling here. Haven't really put together an impressive fear inspired series all night long frankly well, credit the centennial defense for that floats oh. one out and that should have been caught but was not the ball just dropped by Brandon Johnson and that brings up fourth and long Brian Brails had a few balls dropped tonight that should have been caught for first downs or even bigger plays as you take a look at Brandon here just trying to run before he Gets the football. Cardinal sin, Brian. Wide receivers running without the ball. Yes, sir. Got to catch it first. <laughs> catch and tuck, huh? Get the first down. Perfect snap. Very quick punt, and it's going to be taken up there by Grimes. Grimes has room. Grimes looking for some space. What a nice bit of running that is. And Grimes in trouble. Oh, <laughs> Almost lost the football. When I say Boy. trouble, I mean that ball was behind his back for a second. Well, he's an exciting young man with great track speed. Just the sophomore as we talked about Woo. here. But this guy gets out in the open field in space, and he's dangerous. Take a look at this on the audio-visual instant replay. Got to hang on to that football, though, young man. Got me a guy now. I'm going with my guy, Grimes. That's my, that's my new guy for the season, my guy, Grimes. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> his father was exciting to watch as a young man growing up. Russell Grimes. Yep. Bloodline football. First and 10. Richie looks over, has a quick word with Moore. Towards the end of the third quarter, Richie takes a look at it. Doesn't get much. Gets hit hard and brought down at the 29 yard line. No gain. Guess who? <laughs> Number six. Uh, Richie tackles look, does he have tonight? Richie looks over at the sidelines, has a quick, quick discussion with his coaching staff, but. An uneventful play call. Peter Welch has got to be in double digits right here, right now tonight in solo tackles. I'm not talking about assist. Anytime you get over 10 tackles in a football game solo, you've got a nose for the football. Second and 11. Buck 12 left here in the third. Fast third quarter, second and 11. Richie has more to his right. Looks, oh my goodness, had a man wide open to begin with, but this driller defense, you know, 
one thing about calling football games, Kevin, you try you try not to get too uh, predictable. You try to stay out of the cliches. You try not to make it too, uh, you know, just too obvious. But this really truly is becoming a battle in the trenches. I'm sorry to sound so clichéish, everybody, no. but it really is. Oh, you're absolutely right. And, and that play, that was a right play call right there with Sean Johnson running a little slant route. But one thing you've got to know as a receiver is you can't run in the coverage. He ran right into the defensive back there. If he had just seen that ball up the, uh, up, up the middle and, and Richie could have got it to him, he may have, with, with his speed, Sean Johnson may have taken that thing all the way to the house. You know, next week we're going to be at Frontier. Great story today in the Bakersfield, California, um, about Frontier as they host West tonight. You know, we saw West a few weeks ago, and I still think that, they're, they're really an underrated football team, and they haven't really put it together yet, but uh, what an interesting night tonight. Frontier hosting West, and uh, Coach Cornford, of course, won some big games and some titles over at West, so we look forward to that next week. Frontier hosting, um, you know, a nice Ridgeview football team. How about Spanish on Demand? Since you and I have been talking about Spanish on Demand, since we have taken this okay. and put okay. us on our shoulders, okay. Senor Yaves, to make this work, I can tell you, people have caught on. I spend most of my working days in the grape vineyards in Delano. I'm surrounded by Spanish-speaking employees. They know that I lived in the Yucatan, so I try my Spanglish all the time. And now they're speaking to me about Spanish on demand. They said, hey, Vicente Palma, gracias for Spanish on demand. I said, hey, I didn't come up with it, but I will pump it. Love to Spanish go to Spanish on demand. I would love to go cover a football game up in Delano. Hey. God, I'd love to do we that. We should do it. You hear that voting crowd? You hear that voting crowd? Here we go. Third and 10. Richie has some time, has some protection. Throws one out there, almost picked off. Incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down and 10. Now we'll what, have a minute left. What I don't understand is... They came out, made some great adjustments at, at the half. They, they went under center. They ran a double tight end uh, format, uh, moved the ball, had some six, success running it, and then they just went and abandoned it. I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. Well, one thing they probably knew they had in the back pocket at this stage and in this position of the field was Cole Hallam. And so Hallam will try a 45-yarder. The holder, appropriately enough, is Richie. 45-yard field goal attempt to make it 9-12. The snap, the hold, the kick, it's up, and it is... Wide left. Wide, wide left. left. Doesn't happen. Cole Hallam not happy with himself. Plenty of leg. Boy, that's too bad because he had plenty of leg or just hooked it. And one good thing about that Oof. is like a touchback that'll bring it out to the 20. 27 seconds left in the third. I'm Vance Palm. I've got Kevin Keyes upstairs with me down on the grass. Brian Adams, week five. Stockdale, three and one tonight at South, four and oh. Four and oh South tonight. Yeah, but they're up against a machine. <laughs> they're up against a machine tonight. Yeah, well, you never know. Never you know. never know. They're, they're, they're playing, playing a little snowball tonight. Highland, two and three. Oh and one in the league. At Garces, 2-2, two 1-0. And two, and oh. We'll see how things are going with the Garces Rams. And that'll do it for the third quarter. When we come back, 12 minutes left and 12 points for the Drillers, 7 points for the Golden Hawks. Oh, boy, what a great fourth quarter. Back in a moment, Game of the Week on Bright House Networks. Got a job to do? Premier Equipment Rentals is your answer. Residential or industrial, we've got exactly what you need to get the job done. Whether it's a drill, trencher, bobcat, backhoe, or excavator, you can always count on Premier Equipment Rentals. And with our new extended hours, we're available when you need us. Check us out at 3217 Patton Way and 5001 Stein Road, or give us a call to find out more. Don't forget to ask about our weekend specials. Make your next project a breeze with Premier Equipment Rentals.
welcome back to the start of the fourth quarter. As we see Alfonso Jackson get the ball for the drillers. It's been a game of defensive battles, as Vance talked about earlier, a game that is being played in the trenches. You should take a look at the audio-visual incident replay. Alfonso Jackson just finds a little bit of crease and carries the ball down almost for a first down to bring up third and two. Burrell hands off to Hunt, and it looks like he's going to be close to a driller first down, but the swarming defense of the Golden Hawks there trying to prevent that from happening. They're going to call it a first down. So first and 10 for the drillers. He's got the ball on the 30-yard line. 12 to seven. Burrell in the shotgun. Mercy Matson split out wide right. Burrell on the keeper. Gets a good block from Peter Welsh up front. Gain of about four or five on the play. Tackled by Trent Miller of the Golden Hawks. Second down and six. Drillers are going to try and control the ball here and run off as much time as they can with uh, ball control. And they've got just the offense to do that as Brian Burrell takes a snap in the shotgun position, toss sweep to Hunt. Hunt with a pretty big run outside and looks like he's gonna pick up another driller first down. Jarrett Norris on the stop for the Golden Hawks. It's another first down. Big first downs back to back, just chomping up yardage right now. And if you're Coach Gola, yeah, there's a lot of time left in this football game. You get the sense if they put up another TD here, it might be out of reach. Burrell has AJ back there and pitches to AJ. A lot of room for Jackson. Jackson cuts up, he's horse collared and brought down about the 50 yard line. Captain Brian Adams, we've been watching Alfonso Jackson for a lot of years, it seems like now, since he was a freshman. Uh, give us your assessment on AJ. Well, man, it's one thing, he's always been very athletic. But I've been watching him throughout the night. He looks like he's laboring a little bit on that right ankle. He's not 100% healthy. We're not seeing tonight that we've seen him in the past is his burst. Once he makes that break, you don't see that burst that he usually has. And that's what separates him when he makes the big plays. Second and four, midfield. Split way right is Brandon Johnson. Will Burrell go that way? No. Option, they pitch it out. What a nice looking play here. And a, a nice carry out there by Silas Nakita. Nakita bring down, is it Nakita or Nasita? Nasita. It is? Nasita's, the, the, the wrestling family. Get those guys, they get you on the mat, it's lights out. So they're not happy with me right now saying Nakita? I don't know, I'm just saying if If they caught me, I'd be in trouble. Absolutely, double wing, single wing takedown. Get you in a half or full Nelson. He'd be full tapping Nelson. out. He'd be tapping out. Holding call on the drillers. That's a big break for the Golden Hawks there. Pushes them back to second down and seven. Thanks for the sandwich, my man. No worries. Thank uh, Lloyd Freeze and Carlos Serta and Russell Grimes down in the press wow. box for that. Those Great guys uh, take care of us. Great guys. Burrell on a keeper. A nice, nice choice there. Boy, he now he's a got a lot of space. Burrell's at the 30, at the 20, at the 10. Brian Burrell with a beautiful play, and it's touchdown drillers. Wow, we. Boy, does he show a little bit of speed out in the open field. But take a look at this block he gets downfield from Brandon Johnson out here with a beautiful block on Bo Williamson right here. Nice job to spring his quarterback loose. And Brian Burrell takes it all the way to the house. About a 60-yard run. It's a big, 
Big, big play for the driller season right now. 18 to 7. The snap, the hold, the kick, a rifle of a PAT, and it's knocked through by McMahon. And 19 to 7, a 12 point lead now that I don't want to say is insurmountable, but a very difficult task right now for the Golden Hawks. Yeah, you're talking about having to come back and throw the football. That's something that has not been the strength of this Golden Hawk team tonight. As you mentioned, Vance is not, uh, not far out of the reach for them, but they're going to have to come up with some excellent pass plays. But here's that block that we were talking about from Johnson Woo. right there. Great job, guys, picking that up on, uh, on the instant replay, audio visual. Thank you, guys. That's a six-point block. Brian, you know a little bit about blocking downfield as a wide receiver. You got to appreciate that, huh? Pat Preston told you a few weeks ago we didn't throw the ball too much. We had to go block for people, Jason Oliver and myself. But when you see big runs at whatever level it is, you watch the pros, you watch college, it's usually receiver downfield, getting a block on a corner or a safety, allowing that that break out to the sideline, and the rest of the quarterback and that Burrell making his, using his speed getting down the sideline. I won uh... – one moment of being a wide receiver, Brian, in the in the high school all-star game back in the in the 70s. I was the only wide receiver, or only person that played played wide receiver in the all-star game. Coach uh, Coach Silver said, "Hey, you're going to be my wide receiver. All you got to do is block, blocking for guys like Big Roger Tarver. That was easy. They make you look good too. They know how to set you up, dip in, so you can." actually put some put your body in the way <laughs> here's a look at that TD right here Burrell one big cut great block what's good for the goose is great for the gander 197. And here come the Golden Hawks. Richie played a very fine, fine football game. And uh, that was not a fine play whatsoever. Really wasn't sure what he was going to do there. And a late handoff to Grimes, and Grimes just gets mercy, pummeled. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Mercy, master, that is. Well, that's tough right there. You've got both guys carrying the ball at the same time and just kind of a sitting duck situation. Clock continues to tick. We'll dip below eight minutes here after this play. How good is that Mercy Maston kid at safety, huh? Mercy. 5'11", 185 junior. Mercy. Timeout taken by Centennial. It's the one thing that the drillers love to do. They let their safeties run that alley. They come up for, for some serious run support. Boy, you love, love aggressive defense like that. Timeout on the field with eight minutes and one second left here. Boy, listen to that band play, Vance. Hey! Not a bad van, uh, band here at hey. Centennial. Hey! Damage TV, you want to talk about bands? That's it. Bakersfield on demand, Channel 300, one of the hippest, hottest, heaviest shows there are to watch in. Kern County is Damage TV. I think our, I think the godfather, Zach Flores, is still involved in that. Damage TV. Hey, we haven't seen Carlos down on the field yet. Is it too early? Way the, too early, to, too get early the, for the dance? to get the Carlos dance. Moore inside. Oh, man. Pummeled. He is hit awfully, awfully hard down there. And I wonder who hit him hard. Oh, yeah, number six, Peter Welsh. Peter Welsh again. Here's a good look at it. A little screen play. Moore cuts back and pow. Woo. Amongst the three drillers to hit him. Welsh there to make the impact. Third and 14. Richie audibleizing. Trying to make something happen. Only four come for the drillers. Richie in trouble. Richie's going to be thrown down at the 10-yard line. A loss of about 10 yards. And it's going to be fourth and forever. 
DJ Williams coming in from his linebacker position. 6'1", 210, outside linebacker. It's a lot to ask. A big tackle to go out and block him out in space. There's a guy that's a running back playing outside position. Also, Anthony Davis in on the stop. You got Brandon Johnson and Alfonso Jackson at the 50-yard line waiting for this punt if it gets that far. Ooh, low snap. Picked up there and booted out of bounds at about the 37, 38-yard line, and wow. Cole Hallam was fortunate to be able to pick that up off the ground. That could have been a, a touchback. Another interesting football game tonight taking place in Kern County. Golden Valley at East. The East High Blades, if they were to pick up a victory tonight, could be 2-0 and in league. 2-0 and in league. How about Joe Pearson? Young quarterback. The rifle man. Joe Pearson, he slings, he slings. Got an outstanding young wide receiver in, over in that Thank program you too, young Malachi. Burrell's gonna go to the air, lobs one out there, has a man open, oh, Alfonso Jackson almost brought it down, he's looking for a call. A nice pass by Burrell. A great effort here, too, by Alfonso to go up after this thing, but I like the play-action pass and just kind of throw the ball up into his athletic receiver's hands. Talk about the running ability of Alfonso Jackson. He is just as good as a wide receiver or as a receiver as he is as a runner. A timeout on the field, and it looks as though it's going to be called by Well, the call is the official basically asking Coach Nixon to ask the band to not play so loud when the opposing team is on offense. Hmm. Well, it's kind of like uh, having the home field advantage area. We saw that last night in the Dodger game as my Dodger fans were waving their white Hankies and big holiday missed that ball out in left field. My Dodgers came back and got a victory late in the game. How wow. about that? Now Kevin like now Kevin likes the Dodgers. Wow. Even Kevin Key's a Dodger fan now. Hey, can you believe the whining of the Cardinals? They shouldn't be able to wave those towels. Give me a break. Oh, what a nice block out there by the uh lineman. Oh, fumble! Oh, that's a great ball tackle there by the Golden Hawk defender, but I'm not sure if that ball, I think it went out of bounds. It did. Oh boy. Boy, Driller's got away with one there. With six minutes and 22 seconds. About a four yard game. gain. Saw that little, little bit of a burst there, Brian, that you talked about that you weren't seeing from Alfonso. Yeah, but he just still doesn't have it, that, that real explosion that we've seen. I agree. Burrell decides to keep it. Nice job by Centennial. They hold him at the 29-yard line, and that's going to bring up fourth and four. And will we see Hallam again, or will we see an attempt of a first down? Jared Norris playing a pretty good ball game for the Golden Hawks on defense from his linebacker position. Peck Fielder and Sorry, McMahon. I was thinking Hallam to come in and kick, but that's McMahon that I'm looking at. We know what you meant. Sure. Fourth and five, under six left. McMahon, the snap, the hold. Look at this boot. Wow. 45 yards. That that's is beautiful. Good from 60. Woo. That's good from at least 55. 22 to seven. Now it's looking dismal for the Golden Hawks. Well, you're taking it. You're looking at two outstanding field goal kickers in this game and they're probably not the two best guys in town yeah man you see how high that was that was <laughs> at the tip of the field goal posts my word everybody's talking about this dark kid over at frontier how about mcmahon how about mcmahon mcmahon practices at the park next to my pad and you talk about dedication he's out there all the time
Hey, hey, who's that? The understudy. Our Greek intern, Demetrius. Foothills finest. There's a Trojan, young one of Brendan Lewis's finest. Big Joe Turner. Hey, Joe Turner, you talk about putting together a nice varsity squad this year in high school basketball. Can't wait. McMahon going for the field goal, and it's just a hair short from 70. My word, we need to have a, uh, a kicking competition with uh, the kid from West High. Dar McMahon. And Aldo Perry. Hallam. Hallam's got a nice boot on him. <clears throat> well, if you're just joining us, if you're just getting to your television set, we are late in the football game. 544 remaining. 22 to 7 is the score. Bakersfield High School with a 15-point lead that they have not had all game. It's been a struggle at times. It was actually 7 to 3. Centennial over BHS earlier in the football game. A nice screen pass out there and um, nothing getting. It. Maybe about a two or three yard gain out there. Grimes picks up a few yards. Cody Kessler, the big story tonight, goes down in the uh, first half, does not return. We have no official word, medical word yet, other than the fact that he will not return and they're going to take all precautions to make sure he's looked at in the best sense. Tommy Grimes, the nice little swing pass there, showing his ability out in the open field. Second and six. We'll dip below the five-minute mark left here in the football game right after this. And then we've got a flag on the play, and the only thing I can think of is that maybe it started just a hair too late. But that call was not made by the back judge. Good look at Coach Renz, the defensive coordinator for the Golden Hawks, loyal assistant of... Coach Brian Nixon. Former BC Renegade defensive back. It's Coach Ryan Renz. I'm talking about a staff. The Drillers, you know, the third game off of the field, <clears throat> away from their home field as they're getting all new turf put in between the hash marks for about 60 yards. Well needed from what I hear. So they've been on the road for a while. Richie explodes for a big 25-yard gain. It'll be first and 10 from the 50-yard line. Wow, where'd that come from? Well, I like this Mark Richie kid. He shows a lot of athleticism here. This is a guy that is picking up more and more confidence as the Golden Hawk go. As Richie goes, so do the Golden Hawks. First and ten, four and a half left. They need to get on the board quickly. Pull it out to the left side, and oh, oh might be live. You got to get on it. Well, there's no call yet by get the on officials. It. He's still and now. I that's think. the call. They will yeah. no whistle blew, so they must have felt that was a backwards pass the whole time. Well, you've got to know better than that if you're a receiver out there. Take a look at the little swing pass to Sean Johnson here. He just kind of gives up on it. Sean, you got to stay with that. He's still the heads up play by the <laughs> big old lineman. Sean Johnson still really wasn't quite aware. He didn't hadn't really acknowledged the fact. What happened? What's all this ruckus behind me? Well, the drillers look like they're going to put an end to this skid, this two game skid that they have. As we mentioned earlier, Vance, I don't think Gola has had more than two losses in a row in his tenure as it, Richie throws the ball over to the middle to Myron Moore. Wow. And just a little bit overthrown, but Peter Welsh defending from his linebacker position. A little wobbly duck thrown there. Maybe a ball that should have been caught. Pass looked more like a punt. Well, you know, these are the kind of things that 
as Richie goes along in the rest of this uh, season, whether he's starting or still playing behind Kessler, look back and say, well, here's an opportunity on this down, here's an opportunity on this down, whether my guy dropped or I didn't get it there, something to study, something to look at, third and 19. Look at BHS, They're bringing everybody, and uh, Richie in trouble. Oh, my goodness, what a big, big hit, and they hit him hard, and he went down hard. David Williams just hammered Richie. Well, they brought six guys, Vance. They had a, a nickel coverage back there, but even with the six guys that they bring, it Yikes. makes it look like that they're bringing the house because those guys really come with a full head of steam. You're right. It looked like it to the naked eye. Then they didn't bring everybody, and it didn't matter. Fourth and 24. Hallam will boot it, and oh, it's beautiful. a beauty. Absolute beautiful punt from the 25 to the 15. What a nice big boot that was from Hallam. But 50 yards. First and 10, BHS will now grind it out. Watch this at the very end of this. David Williams comes in. Bow! Just throws him down. Guess who was in on the initial stop? I don't know. Let's bet and say it was Peter Welsh. The Eagle Scout having himself another fine ball game on Bright House. Next week, Frontier will return to the new high school, newest high school, newer high school, as they host the Ridgeview Wolfpack. The big blue crew. Nice strong run up the middle, and that's going to be another first down just like that. So the drillers now in full command. They will get off the two-game snide, as Kevin said, and Centennial now, yikes, is going to have to regroup and think about things as they will fall to three and two. What's up on some scores there, big guy? Well, my man's asking me for scores. What? Big Corey Costello over there at the uh, covering the Ridgeview North game, but he doesn't want to send any scores back. Burrell, <laughs> nobody to pitch it to. So he's on his own, and he gets out of bounds. <laughs> Burrell looked behind him and said, hey, where's my running back? Matt Fry just kind of ran him out of bounds. Burrell. Over 100 yards on the night rushing. Yeah, he's an impressive young man. Junior, has got another year ahead of him. Look forward to watching that. Boy, there's some good junior quarterbacks in the air. We saw Josh Legaretta last week at Frontier. Cody Kessler. Blake Campbell. The general, Grant Campbell, last week, two running touchdowns. His cousin Blake running that Fanuki offense. We'll see what they have in store for them. See what unfolds down the, uh, the you know, as we get into November football next month and kind of see where we'll be going. Yeah, yeah you, you decide where we go. You send us. How about the outstanding play from Quentin Cheatham? How about it? Out at Wasco. Already 1,000 yards rushing on the season. What about that young man? And I'd love to see the Tigers play. Come on, on demand. My dot brighthouse dot com. Log on and vote. Bakersfield dot my brighthouse dot com. Dot. Thanks, Bernie. Dot. Hagersfield, my dot. Yeah, just click this, log on, dot. click on high school football it, logo. Dude, everything's this, not dot. <laughs> www dot. dot. Two guys up in the booth, dot com. Go dot. Burrell to his left. Launches one up. They want to go for some more. And uh, no flag incomplete. That was in, well. And Coach Golo can't believe it. Well. Coach Nixon doesn't like that down on the sideline. They're throwing the ball deep in a situation like that. I, I think uh, he just went and whispered in 
Ren, Ren's his ear. I think he said, send the house after these guys. What do you think, Brian? <laughs> well, I think, the, I think the game could have been over already. Burrell ran out of bounds. He stays in bounds. You run off 30 more seconds. And right there, if you run again or take, run again or take a knee, the game rolls out and you go home. You got your victory. Your guys are healthy. And yeah. you're on to the next week of practice. Absolutely. Nothing good ever comes out of this when you're still trying to put points on the board with a minute 20 to go in the game. The game, you're up by more than two scores. And so let's take a look and see what happens here. They go to the air again. Burrell tosses one out to A.J. They go out of bounds. Boy. Wow. I guess it's time to work, still work on things. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, if you, own, if you own the company, you do what you want with the company. If this is your football program, you do what you want with your football program. Well, okay, on, on that one, it was third down. You, you pick up a first down, it's over. It's already over. But now you're going to go for it on fourth. So you could have ran out. I mean, the, the bottom line is the game is over. You're not going to get 15 points in a minute and 16 seconds, minute 22. Just end the game. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate your support down there. But, hey, it's not my company. I hear that. Fourth and one, and they get the first down. And that should do it. Bakersfield.mybrighthouse.com. Dot. Hey, what about this, Kern County? Two weeks from tonight, two weeks from tonight, Arvin High School's 60th anniversary, 60 years, they will host the Shafter Generals for their 60th anniversary. And now they go down on a knee and Kevin and Brian breathe easier. That'll do that one. Well, it's been an interesting week five. It looked as though it would be a pretty evenly matched game for a while. Kessler goes down, but that didn't seem to be the penultimate moment because Richie scored a touchdown just after that so it ended up basically being you know a, a, a battle of wills BHS pulls it out and that's going to do it Kevin your final thoughts well a, a good showing for the drillers are back on track we talked about it earlier a pretty easy schedule from here on out and this is a good game to go into that with a, a good win against a division one power uh, drillers right on schedule back on schedule again Next week, we'll be out at Frontier High School where they will host the Ridgeview Wolfpack for Brian Adams, Kevin Keyes, Bernie Johnson, and his entire crew at Bright House Networks. We wish you a pleasant weekend. We'll see you next week at Frontier High School. Good night. God bless. Good night, everybody. Ideas for next week's show. Key matchups. Hey, I like that. Okay, notice how the pocket square and tie match up with the fuchsia socks. Okay, you don't like that one. I have another one. Sunday NFL Countdown, presented by IBM, Sundays at 11. ESPN, serving football fans everywhere. is getting even better with Bright House Network's TV, home phone, and high-speed internet. Three services working together. So you get caller ID that follows you, showing up on your TV, PC, and your phone. Voicemail that you can check from home or from your computer. Even movies you can order on demand. It's even more access to instant entertainment for one low monthly price with a combo plus from Bright House Networks.